how are you as a remote viewer able to tap into the waveform expression of something? <clears throat> because it's not about you going, so the whole transcend space and time thing, I told you that that was not what it was. You're not transcending space and time. You're just going into an altered state of consciousness and you are detecting the waveform expression <clears throat> And you are then at the speed of human thought decoding it into a four-dimensional language. So the detecting process happens in what is called eight-dimensional hyperspace. <clears throat> it is, it's a complex, it's, you can read up on it, but for us to talk about it would be four hours. So that's eight-dimensional hyperspace. It's just saying that it's an omnidirectional, I mean, an, an omnipresent uh it's an omnipresent concept of showing the, how multiple dimensions are all interchanged and you can be in one and then you are in all eight at the same time. That's what that means, eight dimensional hyperspace. There's a lot been written on it. <clears throat> there are even GIFs out there that you can look out at a GIF and you can sh see by the GIF and how the GIF operates that you could, you can put yourself anywhere in the GIF and when you are put your mouse cursor there what ends up happening is as the gif as the eight dimensional hyperspace folds and moves you're in every dimension of that eight dimensional hyperspace so essentially what it's saying is it's it's trying to give you an explanation a scientific understanding of what we're saying when we're talking about omnipresence right okay so something in the future something in the past, something in the present. It's not about transitioning space-time. It is about just looking for that particular signal line is the term used for it, that particular signal line. And when you can tap into that particular signal line, it's an omnipresent waveform expression of something, right? And so in that waveform expression, <clears throat> It's like the reason the term, the holographic matrix field is used is because you have to understand what a hologram is. <clears throat> a hologram, when you're, when you're, first let's just talk about the waveform and then I'll, I'll go okay. to the hologram. <clears throat> it means that that waveform expression has all the information that you're looking for. All of the colors, textures, temperatures, tastes, sound, smells, aesthetics, <clears throat> dimensionals, intangibles etc now when you're saying this when you're ex ex explaining what you're explaining right now are you saying that everything is everywhere all at once is it at the same time there's multiple outcomes of the world or the universe all at once like for example say say the nazis won world war ii would there be an example of like right here right now like that potential is also here uh that's an excellent question uh, it's not what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, like that, like that, like that movie or that <laughs> that book that was there was a film based off it. The Man, yeah. Man in the High Castle. Yeah, yeah. It's <clears throat> that's not what I'm saying. What I'm when you're given a, a target coordinate, uh, you as a remote viewer don't have any idea what the target is going to be. You don't have any idea. Only the person. There's somebody else guiding it. Program manager. Program manager. Okay. okay. So the program manager. It, going back to the unit, the program manager gets a tar gets a tar uh, a request for intelligence comes from a, a customer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that that request for intelligence comes to the program manager. The program manager looks at that, sorts it out, figures out what kind of target it's going to be, knows which of the viewers are probably going to be better at this or which are not, or maybe he just doesn't <laughs> give a shit and he's going to make everybody do it, right? Okay. But what he has to do now <clears throat> is he has to establish a concept for that target because it is his concept of that target that is going to be locked into those coordinates. It, some people re try to refer to it as an address. It's not really. It's a concept of the target. And why does that have to be there? Because <clears throat> if a concept of the target is not established, if there is no targeting question that helps to establish that target concept, it becomes 
like a shotgun blast of potentials uh, and possibilities, right? Okay. <clears throat> so could be subject to an every imaginable kind of interpretation. So theoretically, the way that you distill that down is to is to establish a target concept, a target question. So client says, <clears throat> we want to know what happened at this time in this place on this day. He has to then write that down and lock that in so it's not just fleeting because it's called conceptual illusion if you don't do that. Conceptual illusion, it means that it's like if I try to ask you to hold the color purple in your head, you can't hold it because it starts to morph and drift. Right. It takes on different textures and different shades and other things. That's conceptual illusion. Okay. It's one of the things that plagues us as human beings because it's like it's why we have extreme difficulty, you know, dealing with shit that's happened to us in the past, particularly if it if we deemed it traumatic. Mm. <clears throat> the truth of it is you'll never recall exactly what it was, right? Right. right. It's always <laughs> elaborated and layered mm. and certain parts of it dropped, other parts, you know, added, other right. parts, you know, increased, etc. right? Mm -hmm. And we have a tendency just as part of our human animal makeup to, 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 to gravitate towards the negative. I know there are always people that go, oh, bullshit, no, I can do... Well, no, true. you that's don't. True. Yeah. When when these things are, when we're talking about trying to lock down this coordinate, we're when we say that in this event arc of time is a term that we use. So an event arc of time is essentially saying, okay, you see the purple line there or the blue one. Yeah. It says the target <clears throat> concept is the RMS Titanic at the exact moment it strikes ice at eleven forty p.m on that date <clears throat> so from that you can see it goes right down into the center right mm -hmm. of uh the of that cartesian disc that you see there right right but then what we're saying and this is just an illustration there is an event arc of time that is actually above and below the whole event arc of time and it's saying that <clears throat> there are now things that are going to lead up to that and there are things that are going to imprint after that. Okay. Okay. Right. So before that actual thing happens, the concept of the target strikes ice at 11.40 p.m. Things led up to that and things followed. Right. And all of those are perceivable because why? Because they are an imprint expressed as waveform because of the collective and the individual experience of those things. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> now, are they ever perfect and absolute and 100%? No, because we already established that, right? Mm -hmm. Because individuals, human beings, have an inability to recall them perfectly. So there's a collective understanding to it. And there's an individual understanding or interpretation to it. And both are individually and collectively morphing because of this concept of conceptual illusion. Still, there are things that we can know and things that we can go back and pull out, mm -hmm. things that we can see, re-examine. We can talk about them. We record them. We can sketch them. Okay. We can say, right? So in this example, <clears throat> which is not necessarily a really good remote viewing example. It's just showing you that, you know, they're basically all that shit you see on there is like seven different people. That's the thing that seven different people did that impacted all the rest of the people to, to put Titanic on the bottom of the ocean. Okay. Right? Okay. So you're looking at all these decisions. These are all little individual moments by, individual people in there and you're just seeing that for seven people but it's showing you look at all how it compounds and how all of this stuff happens it all affects each, each thing other. in a moment in right. this event arc of time so yeah. viewers have a target rich 
right? Environment of waveform expression of things when they're going to look at something. Okay. You may be sending them to look at the Eiffel Tower. Okay. But there's, based on the concept of that target, like it could be in present time, it could be the day that it was first opened, it could be the day that Adolf Hitler was standing on it, mm-hmm. you know, looking out over Paris, it could be anything. And if you looked at that, and that was that event was that blue line there. <clears throat> All these things would be happening along the So you don't give axes. this to the viewer. <clears throat> no. You don't give any of this to the viewer. No, this is just for helping you understand okay, what it. we're talking about in terms of the concept of the time, a concept of the uh, event arc of time and right. you know all the things that are going on because people have a tendency to think of it simplistically like it's oh well it's just that, but it's extraordinarily complex, right? Of what's going on. And now think of the event arc of time there for those seven players in that one event. Now take the other 1800 passengers and understand that every one of them has an, has a, an event arc of time that's unfolding in the same complex and you start to get the understanding of <clears throat> this is what we're talking about. And we're, we're talking about the moment here. <laughs> 